In this video, you will learn how to use SPSS to conduct a factorial between groups ANOVA. My name is Brandi Weiss. The research questions that we will be examining is, do, does the highest degree that somebody has earned and gender have an effect on the amount of income that somebody earns? And also, is there an interaction between the highest degree someone has earned and gender on income? The data that we'll be using is GSS 2008 data. It's available from the website shown here. This is a public use data set. My dependent variable will be the income of the person responding to the questionnaire. That is referred to as con rank in the data set. My first independent variable is the highest degree that somebody's earned. There are five different levels of this variable, less than high school, high school, junior college, bachelor's degree, and some type of graduate degree. The second independent variable is the sex of the respondent, and that has two options of male and female. So this is what my design looks like. I have the two genders and the five types of degrees. So this is a two by five or a five by two a factorial ANOVA design. Let's look at SPSS for how we can conduct this analysis. This is my SPSS data file. Uh, again, you can download this from the GSS website. And to conduct this analysis, I am going to go to Analyze, General Linear Model, and I will select Univariate. Once I select on this, I have a list of all of my variables on the left-hand side. And I like the short names of these variable names, so I'm going to right-click and choose Display Variable Names instead of the variable labels. And for purposes of finding these variables, I've already moved them to the beginning of the data set. Con rank is my dependent variable. It needs to be measured on a continuum. Notice how it has this little ruler to represent that this is a scale variable here. So I select that and move it to my dependent variable box. And I have two independent variables, my degree and sex variables. So I've highlighted both of those. I just held down shift to highlight both at the same time or you could move them over one at a time. And I will move them to the Fixed Factors box. There are a few options that you may want to select, so I will click on Options, and I get this Univariate Options pop-up screen. And I always want my descriptive statistics for each of my groups, so I'll select that. I want my homogeneity test, that gives me Levine's test. And you may want to know your estimates of effect size. This will give you your partial eta square estimates. Uh, I usually don't ask for that because I think that omega squared is a better estimate of your population effect size. But these are a few options you may want to look at. Click on continue and then click OK. And this is what our output looks like. So very quickly, I will go through this. My first table of output, this just contains my sample sizes for each of my groups. My next table, because I clicked on the option of descriptive statistics, this gives me the mean and standard deviations and sample sizes for each of those cells. For the 10 mean cells that I'm comparing, I also get total values as well. So all my marginal totals in this table. Levine's test is shown here. If I look at Levine's test, it is statistically significant, and so this is an indication that my variances, the spread of scores, my variances, are not equal. My assumption, my homogeneity of variance assumption, is that they are equal, though. So as a result, I'm going to use alpha of 0.025 instead of alpha of 0.05 to be more conservative, to control for any increase inflated type 1 error rate, that positively biased F ratio. So I'll use alpha of 0.025 when I look at my next series of tests. After this, I have my tests of between subjects effects. These are the test results that I'm actually interested in. And I'm going to interpret my interaction effect first. When I look at the interaction effect, that's degree by sex, and when I move across this row, I can see that that is statistically significant because this p-value is less than my alpha value of 0 0.025. 
That's what I want to report. That's what I should be following up. There are also main effects. So for example purposes, I'll show you where those are. Sex main effect is in this row. It's statistically significant. And the degree main effect, that is also statistically significant. But the interaction effect explains a more complicated relation between these variables and what is actually going on. And so that's what I can want to conduct follow-up tests to examine.